Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, January 23rd. Tesla is making a massive investment in vehicle service in California with a significant hiring ramp as demand rises following price cuts. Last year, Tesla announced that it was working on service in North America, aiming to make a majority of appointments same-day repairs. A very worthy goal indeed. In 2022, electric vehicle sales increased in 60% in California, and Tesla was leading the way with 72% market share in the state. And now with the price cuts, we only expect that number to rise. Over 200,000 Tesla vehicles were added to California roads over the last year, and Tesla is expected to add a lot more. Tesla has now posted almost 100 service jobs as of late, clearly going back on a hiring freeze that was announced back in December. Tesla has obtained a patent for a new way to make glass that is evidently going to be used for the Cybertruck's novel windshield. For years, Tesla has been heavily investing in material science, which includes glass. We previously reported on Tesla Glass Division, working on both acoustics and the famous armor glass that broke on stage during the Cybertruck unveiling. Tesla has obtained a new patent to manufacture glass that can be manipulated to create novel shapes that traditionally can't be achieved in normal automotive glass manufacturing. With the patent, Tesla has a specific way of making the glass perform very sharp angles, even using multi-layer glass methods. In the application, images appear of glass diagrams that could be used for the semi-truck, but also the Cybertruck is clearly shown. Tesla is working to bring the Cybertruck to production by mid-2023. Tesla has leaked the Magic Dock CCS adapter in its mobile app, ahead of the imminent opening of the supercharger network in North America. Unlike in Europe, where Tesla already has the CCS connector standard, we knew that Tesla would have a tougher time opening their network in North America because it uses its own proprietary connector in the market. But now Tesla has appeared to have leaked the solution in the latest mobile app update that includes an updated render of a supercharger stall. Further evidence of the imminent launch includes people spotting, quote, CCS compatibility which is listed at supercharger locations, including Tesla's Hawthorne supercharger in Los Angeles. Nissan is exploring a mid-sized electric pickup for U.S. buyers that could look a lot like the current Frontier model. Back in February, Nissan announced that they would assemble two EVs in their Mississippi plant, but we only assumed the Aria crossover would be one of them. Speaking with Automotive News, Nissan Advisory Board Chairman Tyler Slade said, quote, The Frontier hardbody has been a part of Nissan's brand for decades. It's logical to bring an electric version. He went on to add that dealers are requesting a mid-size pickup, such as the Frontier, only an electric version. Currently, production is slated for the plant in 2025. A customer survey sent to Kia Telluride drivers shows what could be our first look at the upcoming 2024 Kia EV9 specifications. Although these are not set in stone, we got a pretty good glimpse of Kia's full-size electric SUV offerings. The survey shows prices that range from $56,000 to $73,000. The base model features 220 miles of range and a 19-inch wheel, but no stated towing capacity or sunroof. For an extra $5,000, buyers can get 290 miles of range with 2,000 pounds of towing capacity, sunroof, and captain chairs for second-row seating. For $73,000, the top EV9 model comes with 240 miles of range, all-wheel drive, 4,500 pounds of towing capacity, higher ground clearance with improved approach and departure angles, 21-inch black wheels, a full-length sunroof, and all the extras. In addition, the reader said that a $4,800 add-on could be made for semi-autonomous driving being offered. A spokesman from Kia confirmed that the survey was indeed sent, and they also clarified, saying, quote, The final specifications for the EV9 are, therefore, very much in flux at this time, as the launch is not until later this year. Volvo is set to release its smallest and cheapest EV on June 15th. Although we don't know too much about it right now, the EX30, as it's called, is targeted for younger buyers, and in Electrek's estimate, will be priced under $50,000. The small Volvo SUV will ride on the parent company Geely's, SEA architecture, which will be used for the upcoming Polestar 4 as well. The Volvo EX30 is scheduled for deliveries to Europe and Australia at the end of 2023. Although the automaker didn't make any availability in the USA to be mentioned, we think there's a good likelihood that it will arrive stateside. 
though maybe not in that time frame. Less than two months after its official start of production, Lightyear has suddenly suspended all assembly of its flagship Zero solar EV. Instead, the Dutch company says that it will shift all focus and resources on the development and production of their second most affordable model, the Lightyear 2. Lightyear just posted a press release announcing its revised business strategy, offering less than informative explanations behind vague phrases such as overcoming challenges. With this decision, Lightyear is putting all of its solar-powered eggs into one basket in the form of a $40,000 model with up to 500 miles of range. Lightyear's wait list, it's not even a pre-order, it's just a wait list, it opened on January 5th for customers in the U.S. and Europe, and had already surpassed 40,000 individual names, complemented by another 20,000 pre-orders from fleet customers. This is quite encouraging, although the startup will need some serious investment money to succeed in their second attempt to scale forward the solar electric vehicle. Okay, it is opinion time. Looks like all the solar cars are having a tough time right now. The Scion electric vehicle from Sono Motors, they actually announced that they're not going to produce the car unless they get enough pre-order money coming in, and that the company otherwise plans on just doing solar deployment and continuing on without making a car at all. For Aptera, they're making their launch edition, but they need a lot of money, and they have stated that quite clearly if they want to get that launch edition on the road at all. Just to get to the point where they're going to start making production, they need money just to get to the starting line. And now in the case of Lightyear, they are just skipping straight to that second model, which I believe the second model is going to be very popular for them. But if they don't have the money generated from the sale of that first model, which was very expensive, then I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to make it to that second one at all. I don't know. I wish all of these companies the best of luck because I really want to see a solar car get out there. I think it would change a lot of people's lives and make transportation much more free and affordable for a great deal of people. In today's community comment found on YouTube, a channel called Be Kind says, I wouldn't be surprised that the semi-breakdown is due to driver abuse and driving them like they're sports cars. Pepsi should look into this, and if it's caused by abuse, then training should be implemented and disciplinary action taken for continued abuse of company property. Anything that is abused will eventually break. I don't know, be kind. I would be surprised if the driver did anything like that. If the trucks are more comfortable or better for the driver's quality of life, then I can't imagine why they would actively race around with the payload trying to cause trouble. I would expect this from a teenager, but not from someone being watched by two companies. Come to think of it, I'm not sure if they're not sending telematics both to Pepsi and Tesla. If the drivers are abusing the trucks, then they would be doing so at the risk of their own job, possibly their career aspirations if word spreads through the industry. I have no reason to suspect foul play at this point. If other information comes to light, then that could change, but right now I would sooner believe that the truck just has problems because it's new. Thanks for your comment, be kind, and thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.